Let me say good morning to you again. If you have your Bibles, turn with me in the book of 1 Corinthians to the third chapter. First Corinthians chapter 3, beginning reading at verse number 13. It says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. But if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let us pray. Eternal God, I can only God. I just thank you for the reading of thy word, God. Lord, I pray that something will be said to touch some heart and some soul. And they'll, they'll just let it sink into their heart and their mind, Lord. Oh, God, and carry it with them. Let it be a new beginning for them, Lord. And let them realize that our time is running out and we want to uh, be ready to meet you when you come back, Lord. And we know you're coming. I don't know the day and I don't know the hour, but God knows. And, and when it is, uh, uh, I, I want to be ready to meet you. And I want to accept all these here promises and these here things that you've got prepared for me, Lord. And I just honor you and praise you. And all of God's children said, Amen. you may be seated. Now, if I'm going to put a title on this here, and you know me, I love to put titles on my messages. I want to talk to you this morning about spiritual fullness. I, I've, been, I've been on that word spiritual for a while, and uh, there's something to it. And uh, how is your spirit with the Lord? Is it full, or does it need filling up? And and that's, that's what we got to, to worry about. Do we need our spirit filled up? I, I look at this here about the, what the Bible says about my cup of overflowing. And, and a lot of times, I want my cup to overflow. Yes, the is. psalmist said this, uh, said these here words uh, here. He said, he said, thou preparest a place. He prepared a place for me. Before my enemies, he said, Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Yes. I'm telling you, I would love to get my cup filled and the way it can overflow the way Jesus can yes. take charge of my life. And I can be that there, a shepherd that I need to be. I want to do what God wants me to do. You know, the old enemy, uh, uh, he might go to and fro and try to destroy you, but I'm telling you why. We have power over the enemy. We, he can't cross the bloodline, and I've been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I've been born again and washed in his blood. And whom the Son set free, he is free. He is free. I had somebody tell me the other day the Bible don't say that. But what it says, it, it says whom the has been set free is free indeed. That's right. Amen. But see, 
my God takes care of me. And he takes care of you. And did you know what? Your cup can overflow too. If you want it to overflow, hey, God has plenty for you to give you. There's no limit for what you can get with our Lord. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What does the Bible say? Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open to you. That's my God I'm telling you about. He supplies all my needs. Yes, amen. According to what that chair is down there, is it? No, according to his riches and glory. That's what he does. Amen. And he's a rich God. Yes. And aren't you glad that you can go to him in your time of need and he is there for you? And he'll, he will supply that need. Whatever that, I didn't say he could supply that want because there's many of us want a brand new car and we can't afford it so we don't get it. <laughs> but if we needed it, he'll supply it. Yes. That's the kind of God we serve. And these are things that I, tell, I was telling you about. It, it satisfies the deepest thoughts and the deepest things that we need. Our needs, he will supply, Brother Joe. I tell you, we, we don't have to go like it because of what he, he, he will give you the fullness of blessing. And you know, when, when I was preparing this message and thinking this in, this here, next thing I'm going to say affects everybody in the church. And it's like, he will give you the fullness of blessings. Yes. But how do you get them? Oh, you want to you hear how you get them? Let me tell you how you get them. Bring these ties into the storehouse. He says, that there will be meat in my house. This is the Lord of hosts saying this here. That you may prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. And you know what he said if you do that? He says, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't be able to receive it. There's no limit with God. Your cup can overflow. Yes, Jesus. But it ain't a one-sided thing. If you don't give, you don't get. <coughs> the Bible says, what of a man soweth, so shall he reap. Amen. And if you put a quarter in the offering plate, you probably find a quarter side road somewhere this week. We don't expect to find a $50 bill because you put a quarter in. Yeah. The, <coughs> hey, this is scripture that I'm telling you. And I ain't preaching on tithes, but I'm telling you, if you want a blessing from God, you've got to put something in. Amen. If you want to receive something back. And, and I want my cup to overflow. I want to get that fullness of blessings. And the fullness of joy, I want to get that. The Lord Jesus Christ himself said this here. He said, these things I've spoken to you, that my joy shall remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Hey, and I want you to fill it up and let it be joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what I want. I want to have that joy in my life. I don't want to be no sour puss sitting down and not doing that, but I want to be happy go lucky. I want people to know that I'm a child of the king, that I've been washed in the blood, I've been born by, by his mighty power, and I just thank him for it, and I wouldn't trade him for what this world has to offer and all the things in it. That's right, amen. You know, I'm going to come down in just a minute. It would be nice if you left from here and you got out of your car where you were and there'd be a roll of money like that there right oh, inside. Oh, man, I found a thousand dollars for me. 
But you take that thousand dollars and you say, well, what I'm going to, I'm going to take it and I'm going to use it. Mm -hmm. You stick it in your, your purse or your pocket. And you go on, and you go on in your house and you lay down and take your nap. And you don't never wake up. What good did that deal of money do that you found? Not one bit. What I'm trying to say, if you take that word of God, which a Bible, you take this word of God and you study and you read it, it ain't no thousand dollars that you picked up off your roof. But you'll prosper more if you die and don't wake up. Knowing this here, then knowing you had a thousand dollars, you'll prosper more. Amen. See, God has something in store for every yes, one of us. See, that right there ought to make your cup overflow. Yeah. It ought, you ought to have joy unspeakable Amen. and full of glory. Yeah. You listen, we ought to just thank Him because of when well, He went to the cross of Calvary for yes, every yes, one yes. of us, and Amen. He died on that cross yeah. to where we could have life yeah. and have it more abundantly. Yeah. And I just yeah. love Him for it this morning. I just thank Him for everything that He has done. And uh, without Him, we would be nothing. That's right. Aren't you glad to know that he's still alive? Yes, oh, and he still loves you? Yes, Jesus. Your family might desert you. They might leave you. They might run off. They, somebody, but Jesus will never Amen. leave you. He said, I'll be with you to the right. end of the world. Yeah. And, I, and I'm so glad of that. I'm glad of who he is and what he has done for me. Yeah. I'm glad because... We can have the fullness in God. The Bible tells us this here. It says that we know that the love of Christ which passes knowledge that uh, might be, we might be filled with the fullness of God. You can, there's no limit. We can get full of it. Full of it. And when you get full of it, you know what happens? Your cup overflows. Yes, oh, hold on. How long has it been since your cup overflowed? How long has it been since you prayed through? Hey. People get out and go out in the spirit. And they might stay out an hour. But look here. There ain't nothing wrong with that. That's something God's working with them. Yeah. And, and that makes a difference in their lives. And we need to, we need to have that, that fullness, not just of God, but we need to have the fullness of the Spirit. And, and I want you to hear what I'm going to tell you, what the Bible says. It says here, it says, don't, uh, uh, don't be drunk with wine to the, uh, wearing to the excess. Well, what, do you, what does it say after that? Does anybody know? It says, be filled with the Spirit. We don't have to, we don't have to be drunk to be filled with the Spirit. That we can be drunk with that new wine that Jesus Christ turned water into wine. I tell you what, that's what we need. We need to be drunk on Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb that He shed uh, His blood for us to where we can have that uh, abundant life. And that's Amen. what we need. Amen. All right, I'm getting to the end, y'all. And I know that's all y'all love to hear that there. Uh, but we need to have something that the Lord give us and he give every one of you fullness of wisdom. He give you enough wisdom that you're not going to go out there and walk in front of a car and he coming down the road. You're not going to jump in a pond where it's loaded with alligators. You're not going to put your hand on a hot stove. You say, well, I know it'll burn. How do you know? Because he gives you wisdom to know these things. He also gives you wisdom to him to know it, to do good, and do it not is a sin. That's what it is. But Paul was talking to the Colossians here, and he recorded this here, and I, and I love what he said is, he says, for this cause, 
This is Paul talking now. He says, we also, since the day we heard, heard it, we do not cease to pray for you. You pray for your neighbors and desire that uh, ye might be filled with knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You need to have the spiritual fullness of Jesus Christ. Yes. And when you do, he will change your life around. He'll cause you to do things that you didn't normally do. He'll make you be a different human being. And I just, he will give you that joy unspeakable and full of glory. Just like uh, Sunday morning, I believe it was, or Wednesday night, where I get my days mixed up, when somebody said something about... Uh, speaking in uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues i think brother duck brought it out and uh, and i told him just like this here if <coughs> if there's not if you get up and start speaking in tongues and there's god will have an interpreter there if it's for the church if it's not if you and him have a communion with each other and listen here if the lord tells you to speak you speak i had never forgot what i told you last week about what jimmy swagger did he was up on the platform and the lord told him to run and he took off running listen when the lord tells us to do something church we need to do it and uh, because it's for a reason he tells us to do it and you might say well then, wait don't do me no good or wrong but somebody else might have got a blessing it might have touched some heart it might have drew somebody down to the to the cross of Calvary the way they could be born again and that's worth it all Living the loss to Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever it is, God doesn't make a mistake, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. Amen. We need to stand on the promises in the Word of God and do what He has for us to do. Amen. Not what we want to do. If He tells you to jump up and down, you jump. If He tells you to climb them views, climb them views. But make sure it's God talking to you. Amen. Praise His wonderful name. Amen. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father. I love you, Lord. I thank you for every soul here, Lord. Lord, I just love you. And I can never thank you enough for everything that you do. But I thank you for the opportunity that I have to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And something that I say, Lord, I pray that it will touch some heart and some life, Lord. Lord, I just love you so much, and I could never thank you enough for everything that you do. Lord, but I pray right now, as I pause, I pray that you talk to every heart in here. Touch every one, Lord. Let them realize that time is running out. This pandemic might go on forever and ever, but it's going to, when it ends and you die, where you going to go is going to make the difference, Lord. Whether you're right with, or whether we're right with you or not, Lord, I want everything to be according to your will. And Lord, I pray that you touch everyone in this here sanctuary, Lord. And if there's one person in here, it would say, Preacher, I need prayer. Pray for me. I'm not living like I should. And slip your hand up and flip it back down. Just one, yes, yes, is there a, yes, yes, and another. God sees them. God sees them. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, have your way. Oh, Jesus, have your way. Oh, God, touch us, Lord. Touch it in the name of Jesus, in the name of your holy master. Oh, God, touch everyone here this morning. Lord, meet the need in their lives. Lord, I pray, I pray that you just touch everyone here, Lord. Let them leave out of here different than what they come in and give them that peace that passes all understanding of where they can be, what they need to be. God, I pray that you just have your way. And Lord, we're going to honor you and praise you. Help our church to grow and to prosper and win the loss of Jesus there's families that don't go to church. Lord, we need to get them back into the church before it's everlasting too late. Just have your way and meet the 
ever need you here. And we we'll just honor you. And we will praise you. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we ask it all. Jesus. Amen.